Hey everybody, I'm Robert Donovan. Welcome to this episode of Not Treconomics. Now, this is the one we're going to be starting our sort of plan to get to a post-satiety lifestyle. This plan is my plan for me, and I'm hoping you can adapt many of the concepts that I use to your situation. First thing though, want to make sure that I am getting front and center. I'm a recently bankrupt guy who lives on his RV on the street because I can't afford rent. This is just me telling you what I do and why I decided to do it that way. I am not a lawyer, I am not a financial advisor or a financial professional, and none of what I say here is to be construed as legal, financial, or any other kind of advice. Always seek the advice of competent, knowledgeable, and qualified professionals if you need advice in any of these highly specialized fields. Secondly, all the solutions I demonstrate here are necessarily specific to my situation. While the underlying concepts might be adaptable to your circumstances, there's no guarantee of that because I can't know the circumstances of every individual who might view this show. What works for me may not work for you. Try any of it at your own risk. All right, so let's get started by bringing up the post-satiety steps, those five steps that I mentioned in a previous video, because they're going to drive everything we do. All right, first, seek out people generally interested in your success. Second, get an income stream using whatever economic value you have to offer. Uh, seeking people genuinely interested in your success is the nice way of saying stay, uh, scrape off the leeches. Um, we're incorporating the ideas from previous videos in these, which is why they're a little longer. Number three, keep your expenses low enough to generate savings and capital. Number four, invest your savings to create an income stream independent of an employer. And five, use your investment income and additional savings to compound growth. And these are all teachable skills. The biggest difficulty lies in consistent execution. So let's talk about generating income. You need to finance all of this somehow. And this series assumes you work at least at a subsistence job because anyone running a small business probably already knows a fairly large amount of the stuff we're covering in these early videos already. If you don't have an income stream, treat any legal income as better than no income at all. I did that for a long time, did consulting work. I'm an ex-Navy nuke. I uh, have a Cisco Certified Network Associate certification. I'm a Linux user. Um, the more the better, but it doesn't need to be large. In fact, learning to live on very little makes it much easier to save if your income goes up. That is part of the discipline of post-satiety, is not raising your expenses to meet new income every time it happens. We will be discussing how to generate new income streams later on in later episodes of this show, but this episode I want to talk about reducing expenses. It's easier to start with, and it promotes immediate savings, and the nice thing about that is you kind of can see some progress right away. The key to cutting living expenses for me has always been about mindset. Happiness is knowing what you can be happy without, not having everything. So first, figure out what's really important to you and make sure you can afford those things. You'll be amazed if you do that how little it takes not to feel deprived. A few guiding principles that I use are First, embrace empiricism, because the lower the, your income is, the less margin for, your error, for error you have as far as how much you spend. So you need accurate data on your spending. So what I did was I just used my phone to track what I actually spent on you know, food, gas, clothes, uh, housing, all of that, not just rent. And I did it for a month or two. It was long enough to include some anomalous expenses that occur infrequently. You can use a pocket notebook if you don't want to use your phone or your phone, uh, some, you know, like your computer. But the idea is to record everything you spend, no matter how trivial, because the trivial expenses tend to be the impulse buys, and those are the ones that really eat up savings. Review this list once a week to see your spending patterns. This is a good starting point for deciding what's important to you, by the way, because what you spend money on most is important. If you find yourself spending money on things that are not important to you, take note and act accordingly. But here's what really worked for me as far as figuring out what was important to me. Once you've done that initial uh, two months, you'll know the expenses that you absolutely have to pay every month. Anything other than those, don't pay them for a month. Or you know, I have a friend that tried this. He literally canceled his cable. Uh, for <laughs> 
<laughs> and his net will flex for a month. So not necessarily going to that extreme. If you've got a family, that could cause problems. But the idea is get rid of as much of your expenses as possible and commit to doing one month of spending. Get that list of must spends and commit to spending just that and no more. All right. So that is a great you, know, you can also you know do a thing like uh, sites like the simple dollar or mint recommend where you create a list of stuff that's important to you stuff that's minimal you know that's minimally important stuff that's not important at all that didn't really work for me but i would try you could do that but i would try this trick first and that do this thing where you commit to a month of spending on nothing but your essentials all right and then go through all your accumulated stuff with the following filters if you've had it for a year or more, and I mean go through your stuff like really dig into the attic or the basement. If you've had it for a year or more and forgot you even have it, haven't even thought about it, and it's not a cherished family heirloom, well, I'd sell it. All right, Do it Craigslist, eBay, garage sale, garden sale, I call it a geck purge, and you'll never miss it. I guarantee you if it's been that long, you're not going to miss it if it's gone. If you haven't used it in three months, put it on a watch list, put this list in a drawer where you can, or on a mirror in the morning where you, somewhere you can remember it, check it once a month. Anything on that list you haven't used or thought about, put in a month, put a check mark, and if you get three check marks, well, then it's time to get rid of that stuff too. Six check marks and it's, it's absolutely gone. Usually I stop at three. At that point, I'm pretty sure if I haven't, if, if it's not something I think it's like a seasonal thing, a lot of times that goes too. But leave it for a little longer if you're not sure. Second, after you complete that first purge, do the spend on nothing but food, clothing, shelter, temp, uh, transpo debts if you have them, anything like that. Your must have, your must spend lists. If you do that before you do the big purge or while you're doing it. It's it, some people find it easier to do the to do the to purge all their stuff first and then worry about the 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 month of committed spending only, but that's up to you. Uh, you may find that there are a few things that you've left out of your must spends list. In my case, I decided to spend money on a gym membership because living in the van, the shower works, but it's inconvenient. So I find the gym membership offers a better value there. Uh, when you see something during that month that you've committed to spending only on the essentials um, may, the, in the store you want to buy, that you need to wait until the month is over. All right? You'll probably forget about it in 24 hours unless it's something you really, really want or find really important. That's the way you find out what's important is the stuff that nags at you. That's important to you for some reason. The stuff that you kind of forget about as soon as you leave the store stuff you didn't need to spend money on in the first place. And it's your own brain that's making that decision, so you can't blame anybody else. If you're like me and you like to read, get a library card and use it. Books tend to be read once and then put on a shelf, never to be read again or not read for years. Libraries are a far more cost-effective way to do that than spending 10 or 15 or 20 bucks on a book or more if you're buying hardcover. General rule is, if you don't think about it or use it consistently at least once a year, you will not miss it if it goes away. You are not your things. Follow these steps and you'll be amazed at what you will not feel deprived without. Getting rid of excess stuff is actually incredibly liberating. Very few things can survive that series of tests I just gave you. And if I, and if I don't have an immediate recurring or seasonal use for something, um, I just keep it simple and get rid of the baggage and put all the money into savings, pay down your debts first, and you are well on your way toward making your life better just from this one exercise alone, and you'll realize that you're not a slave to your stuff. Second thing, embrace minimalism. Now, the most useful definition of minimalism that I've ever run across is only acquire things within your means that deliver huge value for the cost. And let me give you my example of my greatest value that I've spent uh, money on in the last uh, few years. And that is even after I gave back my house to the bank from you know, my house in Alaska to the bank, I simply can't afford rent on what I currently make in Southern California. So rent in California, the well, California Socialist, Soviet Socialist Republic, it's 1000 to 1200 a month minimum in any place you wouldn't have to sleep with a gun under your pillow to sleep soundly. Um, and I can't spend that on my current income and still manage to save and get ahead. 
on my income is the equivalent of voluntary servitude to a landlord and all it would get me is a roof over my head. No utilities, no water, no food, any of that, just the space, right? Mortgage would be no better. And at these prices, I frankly don't even want a house in Southern California. I'm looking to buy land and build a house out of state. So living in the RV, on the other hand, which I purchased on Craigslist for 3,800 bucks and I had to put about 800 bucks into, so that's $4,600, that has been surprisingly enjoyable along with my job at Panera because it affords me a roof over my head, food, clothes, transportation, all rent and debt free. It's tall enough to stand up in, has a bed, bathroom, shower, or refrigerator big enough to let me buy food in bulk, which keeps my food costs down. It has a stove, which I don't use much because cooking in the RV is kind of a pain in the neck and in the city it's not really something you can do legally. Uh, it attracts the wrong attention. A, it's uh, got a living area that serves as an office and plenty of compact storage space. Folks, that is huge value. And it's within my means, which allows me to save so I can get ahead, so I don't need to live in it forever. It's a debt-free, tiny house, starter home on wheels. Best of all, it affords me the peace of mind that comes from not having to chase money. That is huge value. Now once I had the RV and was able to save, I got a no-contract phone for some comms and internet access. I got a new uh, computer to replace my aging Core Duo PC. Yes, a Core Duo PC was my last computer. I'm a Linux user, folks. I keep computers forever. And I rented a mailbox so I'd have a fixed mailing address. So fresh start, not end game. The main goal here is to get to a place as quickly as possible where you are debt free and your living expenses as, are as low as possible so you can save every month and start building a capital base to build post satiety income. That is where I would like everyone who is viewing this channel to be able to get. All right, so let's recap. Determine what's important to you and make sure you can afford that. You won't miss most of the other stuff. Minimalism means getting high value more than it does a Spartan existence. Simplify your life by getting rid of any excess stuff, only keeping what's important to you. Get your expenses as low as you can. Use the money from selling your stuff and, sa and the savings from your lower expenses to pay down your debts as fast as possible or start saving immediately. And lastly, don't be afraid to think outside the box to come up with crazy solutions that most other people who are living the so-called normal consumptive life would probably not do. My uncle thought I was crazy when I asked him to help, to help me to get this van. And I suspect the big obstacle for most people coming to this show in all of this is going to be, unlike me, they are not debt free. The big trick is going to be first getting debt free. The next few episodes, we're going to hit debt reduction hard. So that's the episode this time. I thank you all for watching. I wouldn't think any less of you if you found this useful to give me a like and a subscribe. And as always, may the balance of your day be awesome.